Hey, welcome to Analog Output. So what do we got this time? Well, a while ago, uh, Kankus Marrera, uh, AKA Synth DIY Guy, posted a video about building an expression pedal interface for a modular synthesizer. I'll put the link for that down below. So this is a, a module that you can plug an expression pedal into, like one of these, and use it to generate a, an output control voltage, which you can vary from zero to say 10 volts with your foot. So pretty nice. And it was a really simple build. He just used a potentiometer, uh, two fixed resistors, an LED, a bit of pin header, two jacks, that was it. 12 volt power supply, didn't need the minus 12 volt rail. Very simple stuff. And I said, this is very cool. I ought to build one of those. I looked into it, discovered that it was not going to be that simple. Why not? Well, uh, an expression pedal basically is a foot-operated potentiometer. And Kinkus evidently had a, an expression pedal that was built around a 100k ohm potentiometer. Most pedals are not built around 100k ohm potentiometers. They're built around something like 10k or 12k. This is a this is built around a 12k potentiometer, so much lower resistance. What that means is that you run into a bit of trouble with Kinkus's design because he's using a 10k fixed resistor and a 100k potentiometer uh, ahead of the pedal uh, with the potentiometer used to adjust the range and that's too high a resistance in comparison with the resistance in this pedal for it to work properly. If you tried to do that with, with this pedal, 12 volts in would give you a maximum of about 6 volts out, and, uh, and it would be very nonlinear, so it would not, uh, the range would not change uniformly as you uniformly turn up the knob. Well, you could change it to uh, a lower resistance. You could change it to a 1K fixed resistor in instead of 10K and a, a 10K potentiometer instead of 100K. And that would then give you about 10 volts out with 12 volts in, and it would be much closer to linear behavior. That would work probably pretty well. You would be drawing about 10 times as much current though, because you're using 10 times less resistance. It's still a fairly small amount of current, not that big a deal. It's probably okay. But there's an additional complication because let's suppose you want another feature. Let's suppose you want an input jack. And the idea is that if you have nothing plugged in, it behaves the way Kinkus's pedal did. Gives you zero to 10 volts as you, as you change the pedal. But if you plug in a control voltage source like a low frequency oscillator or an envelope generator, then what the pedal does is it gives you an attenuated version of that control voltage. So it allows you to vary the amount that that control voltage will affect whatever you're plugging it into. Seems like a pretty handy idea and it seems pretty simple. You just have to have a jack with a switched input. Uh, you connect the 12 volts to the switched input with a series resistor. And, and then if you have nothing plugged in, then it sees the 12 volts and it gives you zero to 10. And if you have a control voltage plugged in, then it gives you an attenuated version of that control voltage. Sounds fine, sounds simple, sounds like that ought to work, except there's a problem. It's in fact, basically the same problem that we had with the resistance mis mismatch or impedance mismatch, if you prefer. The Input resistance here would be just the resistance of the potentiometer, 10K, and that is too low. Most synthesizer modules expect to plug into a module with a, an input impedance more like maybe 100K. And for that matter, on the other end, most modules expect what you plug into them is going to have a low output impedance. This thing is going to have an output impedance of up to 24K which is kind of high. What you'd really like is something more like a 1K output resistance. So 
the input resistance is too low, the output resistance is too high. What do you do? What I chose to do was to uh, buffer the input and output with op amps. So an op amp has a large input impedance and a small output impedance. And what that means is if you put it in between the potentiometer and the pedal, then you can use a 100k potentiometer and it will all work because it's not seeing the low resistance of the pedal. It's got the op amp in between. And if you've got another op amp after the pedal and a 1k resistor after that op amp, then that gives you a low resistance output. So this makes for a, a somewhat more complicated circuit than Kinkus's. So I've added a jack, I've added an op amp, I've added an output resistor, um, and the out, op amp needs both 12 volts and minus 12 volts. Uh, with the op amp there, you probably really ought to have filtering capacitors in there. It's not as simple as Kinkus's circuit. It's still pretty simple, just not as simple. All right. Um, so here's the module I built, and for a circuit as simple as this, it seemed a little ridiculous to uh, go through making a printed circuit board. So I uh, built the circuit on a, on a piece of strip board right here, and you can see I've mounted the strip board to a piece of thin uh, sheet aluminum, which is bent over and has a couple holes, uh, which allows you to mount the sheet aluminum to the front panel using uh, the, the potentiometer and the, the jack to secure it. And this is a, a Cosmo format front panel, uh, but this circuit board is pretty small and you could easily fit it behind a, a Euro rack front panel as well, obviously with three and a half millimeter jacks instead of these quarter inch jacks. And uh, one thing you might notice is I use these Molex connectors to connect up the jacks and potentiometer and LED and probably in hindsight should not have because the height of the Molex connectors is is too large really compared to the, the narrow width of this module and so these wires are kind of exceeding their boundaries a little bit. Not a big deal, I just have to be careful what I plug this in next to on when I mount it in the rack which doesn't yet exist. Hopefully we'll have a uh, a Cosmo rack uh, pretty soon, depending on how things go with this pandemic. But at the moment, got modules, no rack. Okay. Anyway, that's the module. It's pretty easy, simple, cheap, and let's see how it works. Okay, so here's the module. I've got the pedal plugged in. Got the pedal up on the desk here just so you can see what I'm doing with it. And uh, got the output going to the control voltage input on the Mother 32 oscillator. And let's turn up the level here. And now as I change the pedal, it'll change the baseline uh, frequency of this thing. see the range of that is pretty high. This is with the knob at about two-thirds. Back this down for something a little more reasonable. And of course you can back it right down to nearly zero. Okay, now I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to plug in the low frequency oscillator. And so now we're, we're, what we're going to get is an attenuated version of that. So let me set the range up and turn this up. Mm -hmm. 
So it's varies the response to the uh, low frequency oscillator. So there you are, a simple, not as simple, but still pretty simple expression pedal interface. Easy to build at the uh, stripboard layout and schematics and all that. They're in the GitHub repository, which I've got in the uh, description down there. Uh, hope you enjoy this. The, there's the always the like and subscribe buttons if you did. Stay tuned. Got lots more coming up soon on Analog Output. <laughs>